the moment that is gone has become past our present now is going to become past in a second's time a minute's time depends what past we are looking at so what how can past be an issue um so in around the world when we look at it the past links with anger um mere naal idda kya hoya why that happened to me i didn't do anything wrong um why did i had to face all of that then anger leads to that hate you know apan vair ta keh dene opposite of nirvair our aim according to gurmat has been to become nirvair so without any hate without any jealousy but when we are linked to past constantly we are living in in putkal you might have heard this terminology putkal is the word used for past and put we all know is ghost so we are almost living like a ghost we are living in that ghost timings <coughs> and we can explore it much further we can go so deep into it but I just wanted to give you little bit of idea so past is taking us there and then there is something called future kal nu ki hona hai what's going to happen later in my life we all have dreams we daydream we think about things there's nothing wrong with that but then when it links with fear anxiety that's when the issue comes up because remember we're talking about chardi kala mindset mindset ke uh, ever uplifting positive now our aim according to gurmat is to become nirpao so nirpao means without any pao pao means um fear so uh, if our aim is to become nirpao but then we are constantly in fear anxiety and stress because what if this happens because what if is a future right then again we are going away from uh, first of all agrunanik's teachings but also our bigger purpose and mission and what we lose is in this battle is what we have now right now the present the vartaman because we are constantly living in mm-hmm. somewhere else if you if for example if you were meant to be in a particular classroom in a particular time but you mm-hmm. were um, you were late or you stayed in some other classroom or you went to another classroom which was meant to be later you miss what was uh, right now right here the classroom that you were meant to go and you lose it and this is the thing um what happens another issue with that is what is the story that we have attached to the past if it's a story which inspires you then absolutely fine the past memory is serving us if this story that you attached with the future or even present it's uh, something that's inspiring you uplifting you bringing you that chardi kala mindset then it's all great so i invite you to think and ask you the question right now to yourself what story is it that you have attached to your life so i completely have no idea at what age is you are at so but it doesn't matter what age you are at you always have a story is, is this a story which is bringing me to chardi kala mindset or is it the story which is basically mm, no it needs to be rewritten it needs to be revised because maybe i'm thinking why is it always me i'm not intelligent enough i never get success in my life you know what this happens because of this i told you i'm not good enough things like that so i'm just giving you some examples and what is our world view things should happen my way i wanted it this way but things happened this way that is never ever going to bring chardi kala in our life because uh, guru sikhi talks about that nothing is permanent nothing is permanent everything is um, temporary so if it's temporary we play our best role why do we get attached to it right if if things and every moment that's passing is gone all we have with us is this moment ye jada saas sade kol hai ga this breath that's the only thing we have once it's gone it becomes past and we don't know about future anyway so 
Marge gives us examples. So this is in front of you. Jaisa rang kasumb ka, taisa e sansar. Mere ramaye rang majeet ka, kaho ravidas chamar. So translation, literal translation is in front of you. But the idea is, the whole uh, love of this word, the whole word around me is temporary. Uh, they have given the example here of the safflower and that how the color of safflower is so temporary and pale however the only thing that's permanent is basically that remembrance that hazuri that presence that we have because we are linked with, we are linking that with the um, with the presence of um, guru maharaj akal purak because this is right here and right now uh, uh, and link that with if you want to take a little bit deep link that with sas sas simro gobind so we can only simmer with that sas with this breath and and hence that becomes permanent in that moment as well and then the bliss that we get out of it and there are many more examples but i'm just sharing few here that's another shabd here from guru arjan dev sachi pasha ji um give us a temporary nature of this word feel free to read the translation uh and the shabad as well that how that makes sense i'll just recite it and that will give you some time to reflect on that so jatri chant mahalla panjwa padanu sansar garab attya karte paap anek maya rang ratya lob moh abhiman budde maran chitna aave putr mitr byohar banta eh karat bihave puj divas aaye likhe maaye दुख धर्म दुत डिठिया किरत करम ना मिटै नानक हर नाम धन नहीं खटिया सो यू प्रॉब्ली वुड हैव हैड टाइम टू रिफ्लेक्ट ऑन ऑन द ट्रांसलेशन एंड एंड द शब्द एज वेल इन योर ओन वे दैट हाउ मॉरिज इज शोइंग अस एंड बेसिकली टेलिंग अस द टेंपरेरी नेचर ऑफ दिस वर्ड दिस इज अनदर शब्द अम beautiful dil mein jaano sab fil hala by gurdas ji you must know in your heart that everything is temp- temporary fil hal ke na apne soch lo and khil khana biradar hamu janjala meer malak umre fanaya ek mudam khudaye dara so ki temporary hai ga ta ki permanent hai ga so why are we talking about this because uh, our mind takes us to many temporary things in this world and because of the craving and the yearning of those things we get downhill basically as it tend the uncle will tell them yeah any milia only who ya am any who ya look these people have this i don't have this all of that and what we have we are we are trying not to be satisfied with that as well okay we have many things because of a mind is so busy looking at the things that we don't have we are constantly craving for those things that we don't have which are again a temporary which leads to very opposite of chardi kala mindset in life and actually that affects our health that affects our mental health and that affects our emotional health surely affects our spiritual health and physical health it manifests in our physical health as well why and there's a little bit of science behind it there's a mind body connection a simple thing you know think of something negative um just think of something negative right now in yourself in your head uh, i invite you so maybe close your eyes think of something that's not nice that you don't like it could be uh, it could be a memory um it could be something that you don't like to eat a simple very small thing it could be something else people don't like spiders whatever it may be think of that allow it to come to you and then once you have had the chance to bring that to your memory now just feel what you're feeling just note what's happening in your mind just make a note what's happening to your body just making a note not doing anything about it just making a note and once you have made the note just take a deep breath bring your focus to your breath and let it out 
again if you have any notebooks or i don't know if there is any opportunity here to put is there any chat box i don't know maybe put there what did you feel if anything so there is something called neurotransmitters right every single cell in body um gets the information that you are thinking anything that you're thinking is going to know every single cell of your body and that's what happens every time and that information gets transmitted to every single cell so if uh, is the uh, information is something threatening it's a threatening environment like we just did now um it creates entire in entire body a threatening environment that can lead to some sort of unease you know we are not comfortable it can manifest through our physiology as well and if we constantly do that which is very opposite to again chart the color mindset it can lead to disease disease because we are not comfortable and then all the suppression of our emotions anger guilt fear etc they are already there but our unconscious mind act as a guard it doesn't come on the surface and wants to preserve the body but every time you feel chatti kala or in a bad to deal with these things right so now instead of this creating this threatening environment how about we direct our energy we have lots of energy in our body lots and lots we just need to direct it in in the right direction basically because it is going to do something either we can use it for this kind of thing constantly negative whether you believe it or not we get about 80 to 90000 thoughts in a day and more than 50% um you can uh, exactly uh, exactly i can't say but you know i can easily say that around 80 to 90% of these thoughts are toxic thoughts negative negative thoughts it depends from person to person and they can lead to a lot of uneasy feeling because we are trapped in this cycle of um, negative thinking but if we start directing our energy in the right way then actually we can there's a good news we can break that cycle so it's in our hands uh, so a universe has given us this power um to actually redirect that so some of the things you can direct your energy to so this is not a um, holistic list it's just few things that i'm sharing with you and you might have your own list of things that you do which i'll be very interested to hear uh, so one thing could be um acceptance so what about acceptance does that mean that tusi hath te hath rakh ke beh jao kuch karan di lod nahi hagi whatever will happen is all in the will of god jo hoga theek hoga no acceptance doesn't mean that it's not a resignation at all okay it's a recognition of the emotion becoming aware of it so i'll say that again it's a rec- recognition of the emotion ke mainu itna feel ho raha hai yeah right now i'm feeling this you become aware of it and then you make a reaction accordingly if and as required and then surely do something about the things which are in your control yeah if it's raining today um and you had to go somewhere you, you can't change the weather you can moan about it or you can just pick up an umbrella and get on with things and just enjoy the rain dance in the rain you know so very much a little thing massive thing and <clears throat> i deal with a lot of teenagers as well um and uh, you know older age what one thing people struggling are with acceptance it can be a very simple thing a very small thing uh, right from the school age to secondary school why things didn't happen the way i wanted them to happen yeah um if they were in your control you yeah, change it but if they are not this is the time to understand them and actually respond accordingly as simple as that um yeah and again i'll be very interested to hear uh, what examples you might have uh, in your life about that so second one is gratitude we all understand gratitude shukrana karna shukrane je jeena and our ardas teaches us this all the time ik ik pal de vich assi shukrane ch rahiye it's about truly living this not only saying thank you which has again become a a just a buzzword thank you gratitude which comes out of contentment okay yeah i really feel content 
I have everything I that I need in this moment of time. How blessed I am because there are so many in this world who don't have it. And I send this gratitude for everyone. And I do ask that all the basic rights to rule Milan. Even the science has proven now. A lot of psychology has done a lot of research on this. That those who live in gratitude are full of chardikala, are full of positivity. Um, so one thing I came across was that if you recall and record three positive things at the end of the day, so I repeat that, if you recall, 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 record, kalo, three positive things. If you can't find it, find it. If you don't love it, then you try to love it. Because I can guarantee you that there's always more than three. But yeah, if you don't feel like my day has been rubbish, sit down and create one. You can find one. So three positive things at the end of the day can increase your Chardikala mindset very, very, very soon. Because the way you look at life will change. Your perception will change. And we all know perception is projection. So think about it. How can you... And you might have to force yourself, but eventually it will become your second nature. And this is the beauty of it. Gratitude in our life. So third thing is Hazuri. You can call it right mindfulness. You can call it meditation. You can call it Abhyas. Uh, you can call it Simran. Chomarji Kalo. And this is all about that awakening, that awareness. How many of us find time or take time out in the busyness of exams, studies, um, could be some other pressure, peer pressure, anything. How many of us take that time out to sit down for ourselves? Yeah, sit down for ourselves to work on ourselves. There's constant pressure. Of friendships, uh, relationships these days. This is when you will be able to have a self-talk. You are constantly running around of friends, constantly trying to make friends as well. And tell me one thing, when you go to your friend to see a friend, have a coffee with them or just, <clears throat> I don't know, just spend some time with them, do you sit down with them but actually keep doing your work? Or if they come to your house, they come but you constantly do your own work? It doesn't work like that, right? But when we sit in Simran, we are constantly thinking of some, some other things. That is not Hazuri. That's not presence. Because we are sitting, but our mind is somewhere else. Your, your friend won't sit with you for long, long, get bored, or will not get your attention and will leave. So, when we need to sit with ourselves, the chira rabatwadi andari batha, when we need to sit with that divinity, we are constantly not present. So, even if you sit for a few minutes, sit with this intention, do ardas, kar ardas karke, sit with this intention, okay, I sit with the presence, I sit in that Hazuri. Maharaj is Hajar Najar. Jinna vi sama bat sakadu. And see how your intuitive inner power um, flourish more in the sense that. You are such, you become such a positive person. Naturally, you will because you're connected with internal rather than connected, connected with that external word, which most of us are at the moment. And that external word is constantly rushing, craving, um, yeah, which doesn't help us or our soul. Mm -hmm. So, next thing could be expression, letting go. What do you mean by that? So, if things are not nice, um, you know, it could be that somebody said something to you which you don't like. It could be a relationship breakdown. It could be a pressure of exams, stress, anything which is basically bothering you. Anything. Talk to somebody. Or talk to somebody who you trust fully, not to everybody. Because, again, uh, we live in the place where, sadly, people find dramas in other, from other people's life and that becomes a gossip. A trusted soul. It could be one. It could be, it could be your children. It could be your parents. It could be your grandparents. Your trusted friends. Somebody gursik in the community. Anybody you trust. If you don't have anyone, you might be thinking, I don't have anyone like that. Then 
write it down. Journaling is very, very powerful. Again, that is therapeutic as well. Spend some time with yourself. Write for a few minutes. It doesn't need to be whole book or whole paragraph or whole essay. Anything. Just express yourself and let go. Release it day to day before it builds up. And finally, forgiveness. Maaf kar do. Who do you maaf? And who do you maaf for? Do you, do you feel that when you forgive someone, you are uh, doing a favor on them? So this is my question to you and think about it for a second. Because in my opinion, I personally feel that when you forgive someone, you're only forgiving yourself and you're doing a favor on yourself only because you are the one who is going to feel lighter. And you don't have to carry that baggage of she said, he said, they did, you know, all of that for the rest of your life. You're forgiven and you're lighter. And that doesn't mean at all that you're condoning someone's uh, behavior. If they did wrong to you, you're not giving them permission to do that again. You're building nice boundaries, healthy boundaries, but you're forgiving for your own self. Hope that makes sense. Um, so I found this quite uh, interesting. So between stimulus and response, there is a space. Kuch hoya, kisne tanu kuch kya te hon tusi react karna, respond dena. Ode jik space hundi hai. In that space is our power to choose our response. Ote tarde kul power hai. You can either snap, um, you can be, go into silence, or you can think consciously. And in our response, that response lies our growth and freedom. And that doesn't mean that you will never snap again. But then learn from it. Uh, we always have capacity to learn from our past <coughs> and, and move on. If you hold on to that, then this is never going to work. But our ability to accept your past, learn your lessons and move on uh, would go a long way to determine actually how you take control of your present situations. Uh, and this is very powerful actually. Mm -hmm. So some practical tools um, that I'll share with you that helps me sometimes. So disconnect from your outer world, connect with inner world. We've already discussed how, so maybe take some time out to shut your phones, computer, uh, television, I don't know, any other, any other things which is connecting you with the inner outer world constantly and sit with your body and sit in Simran. Just connect within as we've already discussed, just, just breathe. Uh, it opens the door between conscious and subconscious mind too. Um, and actually, um, we can connect with the operating system of subconscious where all the unwanted habits and behaviors reside. Okay. Create your future self. So, can I be defined by vision of future instead of memories of the past? Think about it. What do I want in life? What do you want in life? Write it down. Take some time to answer this question. And as you begin to contemplate about answer, you're constantly looking at it, you're constantly focusing on that, you are actually directing your brain. You are changing your mind. Isn't it fascinating? You're telling your mind who you want to be. And you know what? Another thing I'm just going to say here is that talk to yourself who you want to be. If you constantly say to yourself, I'm not smart enough, I'm not intelligent, I'm thick, I'm ugly, you will become ugly, you will become thick. If you start saying to yourself, I'm positive, um, I'm the best I can be, I'm smart enough, I'm worthy, you know, I'm intelligent, I'm, I'm beautiful, whatever you want to say, you will become beautiful because you are directing your brain, you are changing your mind. And next, decide on emotions. Um, you'll feel when you begin to create that future, you will feel that actually. So, think of the answer, direct your emotions, direct your brain to that. Teach your body emotionally what future is going to like, feel like. And don't get up until you begin to feel those emotions. Feel the emotion basically. You want to be a teacher, you're sitting right here. I don't know again what ages you are. You want to be something, you want to achieve something. Sit here, go there in your imagination and feel your emotions and rehearse in your mind this is the th third one mental rehearsal rehearse in your mind who you're going to be when you open your eyes things you have to do the choices you have to make so mentally rehearse the future and imagine it 
over and over again until it, be, it becomes familiar to you decide what thoughts stories um you can't bring with you to future so things which don't serve you write them down like thoughts like i can't it's too hard i will never change i will start tomorrow and all of that decide what behaviors um or unconscious habits you have to change how do you talk to yourself do you complain blame excuses become so conscious of these behaviors that you will never go unconscious again and decide what emotions uh, do not belong to your new future you have to begin to condition your body to a new mind say the words to you who you wish to become in reality as i said i'm smart i can do it i can start now i have great ideas and then finally let go of your past self in in order to take that step you need to let go so past is irreversible part of present and can never be wiped off as we mate nahi sakde apna past kadi bhi what we can do is learn the lesson from it and use it as a propel as a force to move on pa padde na aage samajh chalo anand lala paacha jo biti so biti many other pichle augun baksh le prab aage marg paave so either our past can inspire us or it can destroy us ja sada past sanu inspire kar sakda motivate kar sakda ya sanu tabah kar sakda but you have the power okay so thinking from this things that what we can do to bring that chardi kala mindset um in our life and um, asking yourself that question that what do i need to do right now in order to bring that yeah so i'll pause here for uh, um for some time let's uh, take any questions or any reflections that you may have i just don't want to keep lecturing you in any way but i want to make it more interactive if there is a possibility now uh, benji we have <clears throat> a few questions from the sangat so um the the first question being uh what what is the point of being in chardikala would you consider bairag and tyag in chardikala or is that something else yeah so first we need to a good question there are two things here hai na what is the point of chardikala pehli gal ta sanu hukum hai chardikala ch na kyunki if a gursikh won't be in chardikala in a depressed state we are tyar bar tyar khalsa how we are going to go and operate in this world if we constantly seeking help because when we are in depressed state uh we are no good to ourselves we are no good to other people as well first of all that and then we are not here to live in um in an isolated cave and do bhakti this is not gurmat way of living and maraj grana sahib went to these um siddhs and yogis and asked them to come and actually live the grasth life where you can help a, an average person as well uh you share your wisdom with them and uh, not only just uh, it's very easy to live a secluded life because you just do for yourself very i would say very selfish life as well uh because and what are we giving back so think of a sabang quality um sabang is self sustained in a simple literal meaning is a very deep meaning as well how are we self sustained if you're not in chardi kala uh, mentally physically emotionally spiritually we are not so hon tusi apna answer aap pe lab leo ke why do we need to be in chardi kala uh, and then marj also talks about karta purakh so this is not by the way only for guru sahab qualities uh, akal purakh diya qualities ta hai ne but what's the point of us learning that if you're not going to manifest those qualities in our life the whole idea is that these qualities we bring um these gun in our uh, life day to day i'm just trying to think of this pangti um uh chhod ab gun chal liya apne din ba din um sanjh kari jaye gun ek keri chhod ab gun chal liya din ba din we need to make the connection with gun in our life and so maharaj is talking about sai bang maharaj is talking about karta purak so what are we karta means your creative being you're giving something you're creating something uh, for yourself for this world as well if we are in the tendikala 
what can we create for this world we are rather a burden um on this world and creative doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to create hospitals or you're going to be einstein from tomorrow even if you're good at simple thing like a cooking you become a better cook if nothing you can uh, have sweet speech mit bolde ban sakde ha si kisi nu pyar de sakde ha kisi naal pyar naal bol sakde ha could be anything um all of us have a capacity to share love so i can go on and on about it but yeah i hope there is some a clues coming from here i think the next question was then if bairag and tyag are state of chardi kala in order to get that answer we need to understand first what is bairag what is tyag is does that mean we give up on our day to day responsibilities is that what tyag means or actually tyag means that actually i'm craving for um i'm craving for an anger and right now i feel like shouting at somebody but i'm going to tyag that and actually um act mindfully and consciously i right now crave um to have a drink uh, or a drug um what putthe kaam koi karna hai but what you know what my guru taught me to have a tyag uh, and reman aso kar sanyasa e bhi pad liyo tusi oh sare de vich tanu clear ho jana sanyas di gal kehdi hoyi hai not at a single point mar said to us give up on your day to day household responsibilities and tyag everything and then just sit and sit and do nothing um Uh, that actually is uh, very opposite if that is a tyag but yes if we are tyagging sare kalo bhi um ulte kam putthe kam or the bad virtues uh, anti divine virtues je tyag karna ta oh da tyag kariye theek hai onu chhaddiye si we are lazy give up on the laziness um those kind of things and then i think that, that was a question or something else as well with that No, that was it. Um, the second question is: Please tell us about how the Charti Kala mindset is different from toxic positivity. Toxic positivity. I think again, I'm not sure in what context they're asking, but if I get it right, toxic positivity is is that you mean ego? Um, can they explain a little bit more so that I can pitch at the right uh, level? Is that ego or something else? toxic positivity involves dismissing negative emotion responding to distress with false ha ah, okay ha 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 nahi 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 bilkul bhi nahi thank you for clarifying that not at all because if you dismiss uh, your emotions is going to surface at some point uh, in a in different way and as uh, remember when we went to that slide where i shared with you that you bring something negative yourself to yourself uh see what's happening and that's the time so the next step would be in this to answer this question is when this negative emotion manifest in your mind and physiology you become aware of it you do not dismiss it i uh, so right now for example i say to myself that um i am a bit tired i'm feeling tired yeah um okay I understand that I become aware of it the next thing is can I do something about it or I can't do something about it if I can't do something about it then there is something called acceptance but along with the recognition of emotions that comes with the acceptance you're not dismissing anything if I can do something about it I can go and have a nap um ya kuch I have deep meditation or you know whatever else works have a shower then i'm going to do that so in no circumstances we dismiss it because you're not dismissing it you're burying it and if you bury it it's going to come back again and every time it come back again if you're not ready you can take it very uh, reactively i remember i shared this quote as well huh with you so in that pause you have an opportunity to think that i have this negative emotion how do i respond to it now yeah it is it is there i and you know by the way nobody is saying to you that you can't have negative emotions it's a human nature it comes to you how you deal with it is what matters what you do about it what matters but some people sit with it and just want to sit in that depressive state 
for the rest of their life and constantly think ah nya kitta ah nya kya this happened that happened and that is when actually it doesn't serve you any purpose or now you are aware of it you understand it your emotion now you learn to deal with it uh, and this is basically um, it's a it's a process it's a journey and this is one thing we actually we we try to teach in in our course that we offer as well uh, in during one healing but there are many other ways um, but as i said you know it's a process is an ongoing process but for now if you start becoming aware of what emotion it is where does it manifest and take a deep breath um take a take a deep breath to deal with it and how and how that changes your response in that pause will actually tell you that you're dealing with it or not okay um, the next question is uh, how can i make sure my family is in this mindset without being forceful by what my family is what sorry uh how can i make sure my family is in this mindset without being forceful okay how you make sure that your family is in mindset first of all you would need to work on your mindset you know uh once you yourself uh have the chardi kala positive mindset um naturally your energy your frequency is going to attract that and share that with others as well so pehla ta apne aap te kaam karna payega and then little things as i shared some practical tips sit down with your family journal in the night um and you can start with a gratitude journal so simple thing how about we write three things that you were grateful for today uh, and make it like a consistent family time um things are very busy and i can imagine bedtime could be a chaos in some of the families how can we find those 10 minutes for each other one is that we will connect with each other very well by doing that secondly we are bringing that uh as in collective um chaddi kala state in the entire family not only one person is doing that you do that together as a family so start bit by bit and then also watch the language uh, i don't know if this question is asked by a parent but if if it's a parent then ask a uh, use the words who you, who you want your child to be do you say to them tenu sonda nahi um you never listen you are so rude um oh, what else i don't know things things like that or actually you say to your child you're such a good child um you know i i really appreciate how you care for your brother and sister in the house i i, I really appreciate how you listen to me first time i really appreciate uh, how you take care of things and i can see you're very smart uh, give them blessings uh, say to them who you want them to be and here and there i get it things come out of your mouth then apologize as well because we cannot only seek apology from little children again if it's a parent i don't know i'm assuming uh actually offer apology as well if he has said something wrong or did something wrong uh, intentionally or intentionally i hope that answers the question haan ji and the next one is how can you be optimistic without becoming delusional explain that to me a little bit more please what do you mean by delusion they haven't mentioned here but what's the question uh, uh i don't know if they can unmute themselves and say it um but i mean think so you're asking how can we be positive without being delusioned is that what the question is i guess like maybe they mean um becoming uh, completely ignoring other emotions as well okay uh i'm sorry go on say that maybe they maybe they mean by delusional is uh, ignoring other emotions and only focusing on positive emotions no no yeah okay so you are saying is that so uh, maybe what we are saying here is that the person who has the question is thinking because you're so positive all the time you're ignoring other people's um emotions and feelings so when you're more connected with your own self 
as in uh, intuitive feeling is awakened, you're more aware of your own emotions, there is no chance you can ignore other people's emotions because you're more connected with being. You're connected with, you're more connected with who you are. And if that's the case, um, naturally you bring that energy in this world as well. You bring that connection in this world as well. Depending that actually, is that the fake positive mind state? Okay, you can go to your own, but you can go to your own, or you are, you know, like, you're quiet from outside and you're saying, it's all good, it's all good, but actually from within, you're cursing everything. That's not what we are, that's not what we mean by Chardi Kala state. Okay, this is an inside out state. It's a state of being actually a way of life. And not necessarily uh, just a show off that how I look like, how I behave and it definitely part of that. But if there is internally lack of Chardi Kala, the external Chardi Kala won't live um, very long, for sure. And this is something we have to test ourselves from time to time. Is it something that I'm pretending or is it actually I'm really in gratitude? Remember those things that we discussed? If you're really in Shukrana and you are in Santok, Rajya Hoyo Tusi, then you see the divinity in everybody around us. <clears throat> you see that state of Ikko Ankar in everybody around us. There is Jyot of Akal Purakh in everybody around us. You can't see other people's pain. You'll definitely reach out. But if it's something <clears throat> I'm just showing off, then yeah, there is that danger as well. And that's why there that self-check needs to be required from time to time. That actually, is this something that I, who I really I am? Uh, where is my state of being? And these things that I shared with you, um, am I able to forgive? Uh, am I able to express? Am I, ex um, am I able to uh, you know, live in that gratitude and acceptance? Yeah, then you are in that state. Otherwise, yeah, there is that danger. Absolutely. That you can start, you just think, I'm all good. I don't need to think about others. Then actually, this is not the Sikh way of life. Not at all. Hanji, is there any other question? Uh, Hanji, Vaigaji ka khalsa, Vaigaji ki fateh. I just wanted to expand on the question. Um, so, what I meant by being uh, like too optimistic, to, uh, to up to being delusional, as in, for example, um, looking forward to something like you're building up to, let's say, uh, um, like a career, right? You know, this is what you want. You're very optimistic. You want to do whatever you can. But then you kind of um, overlook some of the shortcomings that might be there. So you become so optimistic that you might be in your own little bubble or you can see you be so delusional knowing that you might get this, but in reality, because of the way everything is, is not really possible. I don't know if that kind of makes sense or not. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you for clarifying. Yeah, exactly, Vijay. And that's why there is uh, that self-checking required from time to time because it never means that actually you um, stop growing. Chardikala mindset never means that we stop growing. Growth only happens when we come out of our comfort zone. Yeah? And we can only come out of our comfort zone when we know the areas that needs working, that needs um, some work on. For example, I need to pass a fitness test. Um, and I, if I keep saying to myself, I'm going to pass my fitness test. I'm going to smash it. You know, I'm so good. I can do all this. But I never put my trainers on and go out for a run. It's not going to work. So when we, when we create this Chardikala mindset, we are almost doing subconsciously an ardas. Okay, this is who you want to be. Yeah, for example, somebody wants to be a, a practitioner. Okay, like say, a doctor, Kalohan, doctor, body language, with somebody like <coughs> doctor. And you're doing Gurdas every day. Uh, you're thinking about it, creating that space. But you never open your biology. You never open your textbook and study or uh, do what you need to do. Ardas means that you set an intention and start working on it. And similarly, Chardikala mindset is very much that you set that intention. You do that Ardas, you do that Saran. 
but along with it you start working on it and when we work on anything we will always be aware of our shortcomings because we are working on it if you're not working on it then we are just staying in our own bubble of this yeah it's all good um then it's not going to take us anywhere um and and i hope it's making sense that actually jot the kala mindset uh, never meant that there is no need to work on anything but actually becoming so aware of ourselves that we are able to see our shortcomings even more and work on it and just to add on to that so as you just see our das di gal kiti se so we should kind of look at it whenever we have this as a conversation with maharajas for setting a goal between them right and asking them for their blessings so we can actually do something in personally right yeah so ardas when we set an ardas we almost are pledging uh, with ourselves kyunki guru sahab andar hi ne na sade naal hi ne we are almost pledging that that look this is who i want to be and my pledge is that i am going to start working on it now yeah you do not do ardas and then um kind of not do anything about it that's not what ardas means because again uh, i might be coming a little controversial here and that's fine but what has become ardas has become is that i've done my ardas now everything is going to be done for me yeah but then is it how is it fair for those who are working hard towards it as well? yeah if they yes ardas gives us assurance that maraj is with us and we have a blessing of guru maraj but uddam kare and ya jiyo tu kamav ya sukh panch tanu uddam karna payega we need to make an effort we need to work on that pledge that we created between us and our divine self um that yes i putting that thought in the universe and now i am going to work on it and not necessarily i have done my ardas now i'll just pass my exam or or i will just achieve that e ulta zarur ho sakda hai ki you might not pass the exam or somebody else did more mehnat right uh, they put more effort into it and they got the position and you didn't and that's when we start again you know there is no blame game here it's somebody jinne kita hai ga onu mil gaya par also trusting ਕਿ ਅਰਦਾਸ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਔਰ ਜੇ ਟਰਸਟ ਪਾਣਾ ਕਿ ਅਰਦਾਸ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਪੂਰੀ ਹੋਏਗੀ ਬਿਕੋਜ਼ ਬਲੈਸਿੰਗਸ ਗੁਰੂ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਮਿਹਨਤ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਹੈਸ ਗਿਵਨ ਮੀ ਦੈਟ ਬੀ ਬੇਕ ਬੁੱਧ ਦੈਟ ਅੰਡਰਸਟੈਂਡਿੰਗ ਕਿ ਲੁੱਕ ਜੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਹੀ ਨਾ ਹੋਏ ਕਿ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਪੜਨਾ ਪਏਗਾ ਫਿਰ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਗੱਲ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਇੱਥੇ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਹੈਸ ਗਿਵਨ ਮੀ ਦੈ ਬੇਕ ਬੁੱਧ ਕਿ ਦੁੱਖ ਤੈਨੂੰ ਪੜਨਾ ਵੀ ਪੈਣਾ ਨਾਲ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਐਂਡ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਸ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਫਾਈਨ ਲਾਈਨ ਦੈਟ ਵੀ ਆਲ ਨੀਡ ਟੂ ਅੰਡਰਸਟੈਂਡ ਜੀ <laughs> i have two roles one is that um my um long ongoing role is where i work with all the sikhs who are serving and their families um and look after them from moral pastoral and spiritual basis and uh, our source of inspiration is always gurbani there is nothing else and this is what inspires me to keep going in life and this is the, my source well their source as well which we use mutually to build that chardi kala mindset i'm also a uh, commissioned in royal air force um and during that i work with uh, all basically not only sikhs but all faiths or none and I, there again i use uh, my source which is gurbani again like yesterday <coughs> i was asked to do <coughs> a, a memorial um and uh, so i led some um, service there and somebody came off uh later on to talk to me and asking that okay what was that you were saying it was very universal uh he was obviously a white um guy not sikh <clears throat> and then uh, he said but i could connect with it and you're clearly not christian i said no but because gurbani is universal uh, even though i used english language but my inspiration was from guru granth sahib ji maharaj and nothing i said was which is basically my own words in the sense but how do i connect with how i connect with uh, gurbani and that's what i shared with you 
um so yeah um, my role is very much is very broad educational being representative ambassador advisory role um much more um you know creating policies uh creating that space for all the sikhs as well where they can uh, practice their faith uh, their sikhi whilst doing their job as well yeah and also um teaching those values that we would like to instill in them while they are doing their job but, but it, i can talk about it for hours but yeah in brief thank you Okay. <laughs> My other question mm-hmm. is that I can imagine maintaining the law in the face of external triggers, but how do I stay positive about parts of self that I can't change? For example, trauma, mistakes, and bad habits. Yeah. So as I said, you know, we have some habits don't serve us a purpose, um, and um, some bad habits we acquire as we as we live in this life and move. that happens um but the thing is we don't have an option so either we can stay in that vicious cycle and go keep down and down which doesn't serve us in any way or actually we take a step do something for yourself i can tell you one thing okay if you're prepared to hear this i can be very blunt and brutally honest if you really want to give up on a habit that you think is not serving you is a bad habit in your eyes you will give up If you're just saying it as an excuse, oh, I want to give up on the bad habit, but I don't know how. Where there's a will, there is a way. You will find a way. Um, again, let me let me give me. I can only give you right. So uh, somebody spoke to me last week, and this was a Panji from India. Actually, she she has done a healing course, and she said, um, um, actually months ago, and she wanted to connect again. So she asked me that one of the habits she has developed is a lot of screen time. So basically. Netflix yeah moving all this uh, uh, hindi serials or soaps which is a unending drama basically and very very dramatic and very draining as well how it was a f- so dekha jaye so what right so so what of that was that she's she watches it when kids go to sleep her kids that means in the night that means that it's her bad time as well but she says to her chal koi gali main thak ke i'll just watch one one episode one leads to two two leads to three three leads to i don't know how many and by the time she says mere akhan dukha la jande my eyes are so tired and it's sometimes morning time 2 am 3 am that i'm watching that because it's so addictive one thing after another and then so what of that is she she misses her amrita vela she misses her nitnaim she wakes up very grumpy and she's snapping all day on everyone yeah now so i said to her do you really want what do you why what's the worry she said i want to change but we had a conversation uh, i said so you really want to change it i asked her this question and she wasn't sure but i said look i'm not going to talk to you and waste my time if you're not sure yourself eventually she said actually it's affecting not only me but my family as well i really want to change i said cancel the subscription of netflix for now because it's a hardcore habit that has gone in her and she has tried we have done various things before like in our time rakh lo idna kar lo we've done all of that but her mind is too tight and it wasn't working eventually she said she said she said oh my god it clicked my first step is now if i really want to change it i'm going to cancel the subscription and then use that time for many other things if nothing get some sound sleep so that i wake up fresh and nice uh and there could be many examples i can share but hope this makes sense that if you really want to give up on that habit take that first step first step you have to take it nobody can come do it for you if you take the remote control in your hands you can change the channel of your life if you just change choose to give your remote control in somebody else's hand you have it so nothing else then yeah keep living the same life nothing will change and so um, can you expand on the course you mentioned do you have any resources to learn more about this and maybe any one on one counseling sessions haan ji so we have a website um we have a website um i don't know if i can 
type here, but maybe one of you can. So it's www. Um, I'm just opening it right now so I don't give you anything wrong. And it's www.onehealing.co.uk. Uh, one healing so one as in number one at g-a-l-i-n-g dot co dot uk and we are also on instagram uh, at uh, i think it's one dot healing let me check again or is it one healing let me quickly check i think it's um Anji, one again the same thing one dot healing okay so if you're not clear ask me again so you can connect us from there as well, one dot healing. And um, yes, we do one to one um, and we do run a few things as well. Um, we assess the situation basically. If we can help, then yes. Otherwise, we can signpost um, you to somebody who can serve you better. Hanji. So there, there are no more questions. So you might, Benji, if you want to continue and you can. No, I think that's fine. If you're happy, then yeah, we have a spot to go to. Then I'll get ready and go there unless you want me to say anything or do anything. No problem, Penzi. Thank you for joining us, team. No, thank you very much, G. Uh, Penzi, I had a question. Okay. Um, these um, months, these past few months have been very negative. Like, I've been thinking about too many negative things. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I can tell you the reason it's kind of personal but uh, I don't know why it just happens like I'm just doing my everyday tasks I have started exercising regularly I've started knitting so that I can distract my mind from it but I cannot stop it like as I'm sitting I get a thought that I'm going to die as I'm sitting, I, I get a thought that my loved ones are going to leave me. Okay. Just random thoughts, even while I'm doing that. Mm. And again, do you think, Benji, that it could be uh, because of the pandemic and there's so many deaths happening around us? And you have heard No, it's not because of that. Th these mm -hmm. things have been going on for three years. Yeah. So what, what do you think is... Or is it... If you were not like this, obviously... You know, this becomes a very much like uh, I'm not doing a counseling here because we are in a group setting, but just without knowing the deeper reason here, um, no. if I can just purely say that if fear is the cause, then actually that there needs to be something done about it. That um, because it will need to go deeper. That what is causing that fear? And for now. If you can connect with the um, fearless nature of a Kalpuruk, that actually if my uh, the one who created me is fearless and also his hand is on my head, he's ever protecting me and I'm doing what I can do to help myself as well, then what is the fear? And death is inevitable. We are all going to die. And that death is actually... Not even death. What I'm saying death is that actually it's a transformation. Nobody dies. It's, there is, remember um, we talk about Ajunni, but that's a talk for another time. Uh, we die every day I, when we live in the fear. Not only, a, sorry for interrupting, but it's not only for death. It's like various things come up. Like I cannot tell them because they're kind of personal. I just said yeah, something generally right now so that you have an idea. Yeah, yeah, I completely get it. And I think that's why I said it, that it might need uh, some investigation to understand, actually, because I won't do justice to your question without understanding the cause and the, and the bigger picture. Yeah, but for um, now, if you, if you can connect with, you know, that fearless nature of a Karl Brook with through deep breaths um, and see if that assures you. And then if needed be, just connect with us if you can help in any way. Um, thank you very much, um, Benji, for, for coming on and uh, giving up your time, uh, especially such short notice and, and giving us this uh, amazing chance to reflect and, and to learn uh, and to be in Sangat. Um, so it was very beautiful. Um, 
Uh, thank you very much to uh, Pooja Panji for hosting as well. And thank you for the Sangat as well for coming on and listening. Uh, and thank you for Maharaj for bringing all this together. Um, it was very beautiful. And hopefully, uh, Panji, we will have you come on in the future as well uh, to deliver some other talks. Um, but the details I've posted for the healing courses on the website is in text for voice. Um, if anyone else needs any more contact details, it's all on the website. Um, and I've, I'll post the social media links as well um, so you can uh, research and get in touch if need be. Uh, but thank you very much, Panji. Uh, any last uh, closing statements or comments? No, thank you very much for this opportunity of Seva. Uh, just take one step at a time uh, for yourself, for your divine self. Uh, you are all beautiful souls. Uh, and Maharaj has created you for a reason and you have a bigger purpose uh, in life. Just one step at a time and if nothing, just smile, you know, <laughs> try to bring that smile. Straight away your physiology will change. But Maharaj Nuvang Sang Janke, let's try our best to stay in that state that Maharaj wanted us to be. Thika Ji Pula Chukani Mafi from my end. Please forgive me if I've said something which might have hurt you in any way. But this, that's not my intention, Ji. Why Guruji ka khalsa, why Guruji ki fateh. Why Guruji ka khalsa, why Guruji ki fateh.